Hello everyone and welcome back. So we are going to discuss now the the uh, the matrices that we can use to evaluate the performance of of our machine learning algorithm. Like so far, we have seen we have discussed the the concept of the uh, the machine learning model, and then we have seen how we can extract the data that we are going to use into the into our machine learning model, and then we discuss the. Uh, feature engineering space, and then uh, we look at the actual implementation of the model, that how we apply the uh, the, uh, the, uh, the data or features, uh, how we feed it into, into, the, into the machine learning model and get the outcome, right? And now the only thing remaining is check the, 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 the accuracy or the efficiency of the model, because obviously uh, without that, it would be difficult for us to, to find out how effective our predictions are. Uh, and how accurately the model is working, right? And based on these efficiency, obviously we continue to work on, on the model to improve it. And like I mentioned, one of the uh, factor we have seen, which in our example is impacting on, on, the, on the prediction outcome of, of our uh, model, that is the imbalance of the classes. Like we have seen that in, the, in our model, we have only two class, person who is earning uh, more than 50K a year and person who is earning less than or equal to 50K a year, right? So in that uh, uh, scenario, we have seen the the the, uh, the class where the person is learning, uh, uh, is, as person is earning less than 50K a year, the number of instances are three times more than the person who is earning more than 50K. And then we have seen the direct impact on the outcome of, of the of the prediction that we are ex getting from, from our logistic regression. Now, uh, what we are going to discuss now is a couple of metrics that we can use uh, to, to calculate the efficiency of, of, the, of, the, uh, of the model. So once we uh, improve uh, and once we, you know, uh, uh, feed a new data set and we, you know, refine our data set and we feed it back into the model. So we use these matrices to, to see whether the, the, uh, the efficiency has been improved or not. And by the way, within the, within the, uh, uh, actual environment or in the real time environment, I tell you with couple of uh, percentage improvement makes big differences because you don't know how much efficiency you normally gain. Once our model has been improved uh, uh, from, uh, you know, from 80% to 82% or 83% because we are not feeding, you know, uh, 1000 or 10,000 record. Normally the, the average size of the data which we normally feed into our machine learning model are in millions. So you can imagine with every small efficiency makes a big difference in the in the outcome of, of the machine learning model. So coming back to towards the towards the uh, 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 parameters that we are going to address today uh, uh, in the in this video, uh, the very first one is the accuracy and accuracy normally we calculate. Uh, the total number of uh, 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 records or the total number of features which we are feeding into the model. And we are going to uh, use uh, true positive. And let me tell you what is true positive means. True positive means where the actual value and the prediction value are matching to each other. So for example, our first class, like the, uh, uh, the, the person who is uh, uh, earning more than 50K is uh, the, uh, uh, is the uh, the positive case and then person who is earning less than uh, 50k that is going to be uh, uh, negative and let me take a more simple or relevant example person who is going to survive that's a positive and person who is not going to be survived is the negative so now in that scenario if in our data set, we have a value because I'm talking from the training perspective or even from the testing perspective. If the actual value is survived and our algorithm is predicting as survived, that is going to be true positive. Now, if our value, actual value is going to be survived, but our algorithm is uh, predicting as not survived, that is going to be false positive, right? Because the algorithm is not predicting correctly. It is giving us a false positive. Secondly, if actual value is in the, in the data set is going to be uh, not survived and the algorithm is also predicting the person is not going to be survived, that is called true negative. 
However, if the value is going to be not survived, but the algorithm is predicting is going to be survived, that is called false negative, right? So, <coughs> excuse me. These are the four, four parameters we use to, to define these three terms, accuracy, recall, and precision, right? Always remember, these are the three major uh, uh, matrices that we normally use. Uh, to 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 you know, to evaluate the the performance of any machine learning algorithm in our day-to-day -day, uh, activities. Now, how we calculate the uh, the uh, the accuracy, recall, and precision? We'll first go into the demo environment, and then I'm going to show you practically the, uh, through the formula. So we are now connecting to our uh, dev environment. Let me. I think that's the one. Yeah. And by the way, I just realized in the first one, the, the zoom view was very low. So you might have problem to, uh, to see one of the, uh, seeing the, the notebook in one of the videos. So please download the, the notebook from the Git and you can you know uh, import it into the Databricks to follow along while uh, you are uh, watching that video. But in the, in the last two one where I run the demo on the logistic regression and this one, I've already increased the, the zoom. So you're gonna see the, 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 the cells clearly within, within the Databricks environment. All right, so coming back in, in here, let me first show you because we are running it against the training data set. Like I mentioned, so you can see I have uh, represented the true positive as TP, and you can see where the prediction is the 1.0 and the actual value is 1.0, where these two are matching. We are putting them in the in the in the TP and uh, we are counting them and we put that count in the TP, right? Same true negative where we are uh, the actual value is going to be zero and prediction is also going to be zero. So that is true negative, right? Then obviously the false positive where we have the actual uh, value is zero, but we are predicting as one, right? Because that is the false positive. It is giving us positive, but that is a false result because the actual value is zero. Same false negative is going to be where the actual value is one, which is positive, but we are getting the prediction as zero, right? So which is the reverse. Now, the accuracy is obviously because the first two are only the correct values, right? The last two are going to be incorrect because they are differing the actual value. So how we calculate the accuracy? Let me first run this one. So then uh, cell has been executed. How we calculate the accuracy? We uh, calculate, uh, we sum up the to uh, true positive and the true negative, and we divide it by the total uh, 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 total result sets uh, or the total number of records sitting in the in the in the result set that we have feed or the feature set which we have feed into into the machine learning model. So we can get it by the count, and we are obviously getting the uh, the uh, the result from the training results uh, 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 data frame or uh, set. So let's see, we divide and see the accuracy, what accuracy we are going to get. We are going to, uh, uh, we are going to get at least uh, 83.7, which is if you round it, it's going to be 84% uh, accuracy, which is not bad. Like, you know, you can see we are uh, uh, predicting almost 85% of the records in our data set correctly uh, we are predicting correctly uh, their their classes, right? Which is really sweet in 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 the in the real time environment, right? Especially think about once you have millions of records and we, you have so many features there. If you are attaining eighty five percent or ninety percent uh, accuracy, that that's great, right? Because the the rest of the ten percent we can still look and we can investigate why they are not they are not predicted correctly right so that that's not a bad and like i mentioned if we just you know balance our our classes we're gonna we're gonna actually improve that number even more like you can easily go within the within the 90s uh, uh, uh with the with the balance or slight balancing of our our class all right so that that's what the accuracy is now the next one is the recall so what recall is recall is actually the it is linked with the the positive, uh, the positive prediction. So how we calculate it? Obviously, we divide the true positive 
by the two positive and the false negative. So false negative, what the false negatives are, that we are predicting them as a, as a negative, but they are actually positive. So what we do normally, we actually divide our uh, true positive by the sum of true positive and false negative. Like you can see, we have the, uh, we are going to take the, the ratio between the true positive and the sum of true positive plus false negative. So that's what we call it recall, right? And you can see that that's where the problem, our true positive cases uh, are really low and that's where it is impacting on, on, the, on the accuracy of the model, right? Because what I'm gonna show you now, you will be surprised that with this data set, if we can slightly balance our data, you will see the, the overall accuracy of the model is going to be improved significantly. Now, so the precision is all linked with the true negative, where obviously the value is zero and we are predicting zero, which is the second statement in this cell. And what we are dividing with, obviously we are dividing it uh, with the true negative plus the false positive. Because why we are uh, using false positive is because it has actual values negative. So we are going to take the ratio, okay, how many, uh, how many uh, of the true negatives are coming correctly from the total uh, uh, negative uh, 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 sets, which are obviously going to be a sum of true negative as well as the false positive, right? So these are, uh, that, that's what we call precision. So these three terms really help you to identify the, the accuracy of, of your model. And let me just, you know, show you the precision. You can see we are getting 92% precision. So that means one of our class which has, and that's why I actually ask you to remember the, the, the number of uh, records in the, in the, in the uh, training and testing set. So let me show you quickly the, the training and testing, sorry, testing uh, uh, records. So you can see we have 14,743 in the training set and 4,731. So now imagine if we just increase the, the number of instance or you know, just balance the class, we're gonna obviously have more accuracy into, into our, uh, into our uh, logistic regression model. Okay, so there we were, yeah, we covered this one. So that, that's, that's the concept of, you know, uh, uh, using uh, the, uh, uh, the mat matrices that we use to uh, find out the, the accuracy uh, of machine learning model. And then it will help us to, you know, to investigate further how we can improve the efficiency. So I have actually run it for, for the, 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 the training data set, but we can also go with, uh, and see how it's gonna actually work for the testing data set. So let's do for the testing as well. So let me first show you the testing uh, records. So you can see we have zero class, which represent people uh, who are earning less than equal to 50K. We have 49, uh, 4,990 instances. And uh, people who are earning more than uh, 50K a year, we have 1,537 uh, uh, instances. We have already run this cell. I'm not going to execute it because I've already executed on the, on the clock. And now that's again the same uh, cell, but uh, we, can, we can run it just to show you. Yeah, so it's like actually showing you all, uh, showing us all the data that we are getting. And you can see what we are showing in here where the true positives are, where the prediction is one, as well as the class output is one. And by the way, that is our testing data set, guys. It's not the training. So obviously the instances are going to be less than the training data because only at 0.2%. All right. Now, obviously we are now going to see the, the true neg uh, false positive where we are predicting one, but the actual value is going to be zero. So we have 387 records, and if you uh, add them, it's going to be 150 uh, plus uh, records, which is equal to the total uh, 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 positive class of people who are earning uh, greater than uh, 50K a year. Now, true negative we are going to see, and you'll be surprised by looking at the result where the, the actual value is zero and our model is uh, 
predicting zero. That is obviously the true negative, the first class. And you can see the accuracy is amazing, like it's more than, it's showing more than a uh, thousand. But what I'm going to do just for, for, the, for the information, I'm just going to show the count as well. So you're going to see the true negative which we are getting in, in here. We are getting 4,603. So out of 4,699, oh, sorry, 4,990 records, we are predicting 4,603 records correctly, which is not bad, I tell you. It's over 90%. And obviously the, the false negative, we are the actual value is one, but we are predicting zero. You can see we have a slight count, 693 records, right? So, and then obviously we did the same thing. We calculate these four, true positive, true uh, negative, false positive, and false negative from the T's representing the test data set. So we are now calculating all these, uh, uh, the parameters uh, from, from the testing data perspective. Now, let me first calculate the, uh, the uh, the uh, accuracy and the formula is always going to be the same. We are going to use the, the true positive plus true negative divided by the total number of records. And now that is going to be accuracy, which is almost same, right? So you can see the, the, the model is uh, not overfitted or underfitted. It is behaving really good, like with the unknown data set, right? And like uh, if you're gonna run the notebook by yourself, I left one more data set, which is the validation, right? So I split the data into, into three pieces. We are using one to train the model. Second one, we are going to use to, to test. And then the third one, we still have, if you want to, you know, to run it by ourselves to see the efficiency of the model, we can still use it. Okay, so recall, we can see it's slightly higher than, than the training one, even it is uh, uh, doing better than the, the training. The testing is more like 55%, uh, although the, 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 the class uh, instances are very low in, in our data set, right? And you're gonna see the, uh, the zero class, we are getting 92%. So that, that's how we calculate the accuracy of, of our machine learning model. Uh, the good thing we have discussed two, uh, uh, two regression, uh, sorry, two uh, linear model. One is linear regression, which is used for uh, uh, regression problem. And the second one we have used for, for our first classification example, uh, our first classification model, which we have used uh, uh, for, for classifying the, the, the category of the worker uh, uh, based on the attributes. Now, only thing remaining is the mathematical derivation of, of, the, of the formula that we're gonna actually uh, drive in, in, the, in the next video. But if you don't even understand the, the mathematical uh, mechanics, or if you don't want to, you can still use the logistic regression to get the max out of it, right? By looking at the, the, the main parameters that you need, and you know by uh, uh, feeding the right values in the model, you can still get them all, get the best value benefits from, from your you know, machine learning algorithms or model. So that, that's all about the classification. Obviously, the next step is to, to drive the math. And then we're going to jump on another very useful and commonly used uh, machine learning model, which is decision tree and the random forest. So stay tuned for those videos. Please like uh, uh, the videos if you are watching them and you find them useful. Uh, put any comments, more than happy to, to, to respond. Uh, uh, and I'm gonna actually see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.